What's going on, y'all? You're listening to Occupy the Media. We're in our final segment here. Just want to let you know if you haven't, uh, join me on Facebook. You can find me, Paco Elijah. Uh, also, LA Liberty HQ. That's LA Liberty HQ. And if you haven't already, watch the vote 2012. Again, watch the vote 2012. Okay, we got my guest, Amir, on the line. You still there, Amir? Yeah, and uh, RonPaulLosAngeles.com, too. Oh, there you go, Ron you Paul Los visit. Angeles. You guys are in the L.A. area. That's where the events are, right, keeping updated with the events? Right, right, yeah. And uh, there's also on LALibertyHQ.org, you can also find some information, too. All right, cool. So we were talking about, uh, I'll let you finish up what you were saying about the, how they view Americans. Right, right, yeah, um, you know, so it's pretty much really in a positive light, I mean, whenever I, you know, I remember last time I was there, um, you know, I would, if if it was a government official or something, I wouldn't be too quick to say, I'm young, yeah, I'm American, you know, but <laughs> anybody, anybody who found out that you're American loves it, you know, you tell them you're from California, you tell anybody in the world you're from California, and you know, they'll, they'll love it. They'll love to hear it, you know. So, yeah. you know, they don't they don't hate us because we're American and they don't hate us because we're free, you know. The, the thing they don't like is that we've been interfering in their government for the last almost century, you know, either us or Britain. And what Americans also don't realize is that the reason that there is the government that there is today is because of what Ron Paul always talks about and blowback and... You know, the one thing that really caught me with Ron Paul was when he talked about the blowback in Iran, where, you know, it was the first uh, CIA uh, secret operation, and, uh, you know, we went in, we overthrew a democratically elected prime minister in 1953, Mohammed Mossadegh, we installed a dictator, a king, and the Shah of Iran for the next few decades wasn't too nice to his people. I mean, one of the reasons that my dad came to America in the first place wasn't because of the new government of Iran. It was because of the old one, because the Shah's government, who was completely backed by America, was still extremely oppressive to the people of Iran. You know, just just because they were a little more free and modernized and westernized doesn't mean that, the, you know, there wasn't still a dictator running the country. So... Yeah, and we're supposed to expect them to love us for that. Oh, what happened? We just took your elected government and put in what right. we wanted. <laughs> Aren't exactly. You I mean, that? <laughs> yeah, and that's, you know, you know the, uh, the, the Persian people have had a long history of uh, freedom, you know. So they... well, if you, uh, you know, look at the news from, from America's point of view, it's almost like not if we're going to bomb Iran, but more about when we're going to bomb Iran. What would you say is kind of the prediction on the minds of Iranians. Like, do they think that an attack is, is definitely coming, or do they think it's just, oh, it's just high bank going to really bomb us? Or well, What do you think, or have you talked to anybody? What's their thoughts along that? Yeah, you know, uh, I was actually just reading this article about, uh, you know, you might you might think we're, we're still, you know, in this big battle with Iran if you're listening to the Western media, you know. This, this whole thing that's been happening with Iran has literally been happening since, you know, after 9-11 came out and Bush started the axis of evil with, with North Korea and Iran and he put them all in there. You know, this, this has been going on for 10 years now, the threats to Iran. So I, I think the Iranian people kind of realize, like, at the end of the day, you know, this is just talk and it's been talk for a really long time. And, you know, if, if anything is going to happen then, you know, it probably should have happened already. This this war hype with Iran just goes up and down every few years. You know, the mainstream media will come out every few years, try to tell us that Iran's bad and bad. And it's always about the nuclear program and always about how Iran's going to build a nuke in the next year, and then, and then a year happens, and then Iran still doesn't have a nuclear weapon, or, and then, it, you know, it's just vice versa. The same thing just now, keeps happening over and over. Now, the people of Iran... And to my knowledge, the the nuclear energy is just just for energy, and in, and to my knowledge, the people of Iran are in favor of that. They want their government to continue uh, for to get nuclear energy, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, they do, and it's because then they don't have to be dependent on their oil, exactly. so they could have alternative sources of energy. You know what? 
what, what is wrong with that? I mean, personally, I don't agree with nuclear power that much. I, I think it's pretty unsafe if we look at what happened in Fukushima, you know. Um, but, you know, if it benefits your society, if it can help you, then go ahead. You know, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Well, the go yeah. our government's trying to say they're trying to use it for weapon purposes, and they're trying to say they're using it for energy purposes. But, yeah, whether, like Juan Paul says, if we can just get to a free market, and I'm talking about the U.S. I mean, obviously, I would love for the right. free market in Iran, too, but... If there was a free market, then those energy sources that are safer would, would would be more appealing, and they would come out, you know, instead of the government trying to back, you know, certain energy corporations or energies and push that. If we could just have the free market, and then people will, will come to see and come to realize what is the safest choice, what is the best choice that's for us. And, and, you know, if something like that could happen in Iran, that would be great. But in the meantime, our government is trying to say, oh, everything is for weapon purposes. Everything is about blowing up. And I look at it like... Iran is committing suicide if they even aim at us. If they even right. even talk crazy to us. You know, so like Ron Paul says, they would be crazy. They don't want to commit suicide. So I, I just think, like you said, a lot of this is hype. All this is talk. It's just been going on. Uh, the Iranian people want to be free and prosperous just like we do. Now, uh, we all saw that revolution taking place, or a close revolution taking place. What if you've been keeping up with some of the people over there? What's going on now? What what are their efforts, or what are the people doing now to try to maybe get that that fire going again, or you know, get that 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 revolution coming back? Well, I mean, like I said earlier, you know, it's it's really hard for you know a revolutionary movement and a true movement of change to happen when you have these outside forces constantly yeah. threatening you. Because you know, for example. Um, a good example I like to bring up is the Iran-Iraq War. A million Iranians gave their lives to, you know, and nobody really won that war. But at the same time, Iraq had the backing of almost every superpower on earth, where whereas Iran was almost alone, you know, except when America decided to give them money and then give Iraq money and then give them money instead. But, you know, that's just some shady stuff that our government does. Pretty, pretty typical. But, um, yeah, I mean... If uh, the the Shah's son actually came out yesterday, I think, and uh, he went on Israeli uh, TV, and he was saying, he's like, "You guys would be crazy if you guys went and just started dropping bombs on Iran. That's not gonna that's not gonna help anything. What you guys need to start doing is help the opposition. But you know, there is no opposition when they're constantly being threatened by war. You know, yeah, and another yeah. thing is." They don't have any help at all, you know. When, when the uh, the big protests were happening after the uh, last presidential elections in Iran, uh, you know, what what did our government would do? We said, oh, we stand with the people of Iran. Blah blah blah. You know, Obama just talking some more, and then and then we didn't do anything. You know, we you know if if we're going to intervene and do something, like we should. You know, I think we should stay out of everything, and I don't think we should, you know, ever be saying anything about anybody, but, I mean, if we're going to go help somebody and then not help other people, like, we're hypocrites, you know. If we're going to go yeah. on Al-Qaeda in Syria, but we're not going to go help, you know, the people on the streets in Iran, then, you know, it's, it's hypocritical. It's a hypocritical policy that we've had, and, you know, the, what people don't realize is the Arab Spring started in Iran. It just never finished in Iran yet. So, yeah, and remember, everything is yes. yet. Everything. Because yes. there will be a revolution in every country, I believe. The there internet, will be. There's a blowback, man. The Internet's blowback. And, they, yep. and uh, they've allowed too many of us to, to come together to organize and all that. So we are uh, coming up to the end of the show, though. I think we got about less than a minute left before the music's going to cut back on. So, yeah, that was great, Amir. I appreciate you being on and letting us know again. Uh, and you guys can reach Amir uh, on Facebook. His last name. How do you say your last name? I want to make sure I say it right. Uh, Zendanam. Uh, you could, you could uh, check out my Twitter. It's uh, A-M-I-R is my first name, and then Z-E-N-D-E-H-N-A-M. You can follow me there on Twitter. And you're also really active with LA Liberty headquarters, so you guys can also yeah yeah. Right if if, uh, if anybody's in the LA or Southern California area and they want to help out with the Ron Paul campaign, we have a grassroots headquarter in Venice. Uh, we we do a lot of the work for the campaign in primarily Los Angeles and Southern California as well. So if anybody wants to get involved, check out LALibertyHQ.org and RonPaulLosAngeles.com. And they can get all the information there. We need as many volunteers as we can to get Ron Paul to win California. That's right. That's right. Well, Amir, you keep.